Hey folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. For 2022, the Toyota Tundra is all new. New frame, new powertrain, everything here is basically from the ground up. Now we have had a chance to drive this truck, but we haven't had a chance to work with this truck yet, and that's what we're going to do today. So we're gonna hook up a 7,000 pound trailer, we'll load that bed with payload, and then we'll tell you how good this new Tundra really is. with the walk around. So powering our Tundra SR5 TRD off-road today is the iForce engine. This is a three and a half liter twin turbo V6. It makes 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque sent through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now I just mentioned the truck you're looking at right here is a TRD off-road and that does mean it gets some unique styling elements. The first one is this black grille up here on the front. There are also some other black accents you're going to see like the trim around the wheels and on the mirrors. Now over here wheels and tires that is a set of Michelin LTX trail tires uh, wrapped around 18 inch wheels. Those are also those are also blacked out because this is the TRD off-road. Now roll back we get a really nice step down here. It's covered in a bed liner material, so it'll be protected. Now, as we get to the back end of the truck, we have to talk about the bed because there is a lot going on back here. This is a brand new bed from the ground up. We do have a damped tailgate, and the big deal here, this is composite. There's no steel back here in this bed. Now this is an interesting decision because a composite bed is more expensive to produce than a steel bed. So Toyota decided to spend its money right back here. This is nice because if you chip it, if you cut into it, it's never going to rust. You don't have to worry about repairing it that much. The biggest downside, I always mention this, it's slippery and it does have some grit to it, but it's still more slippery than a steel bed. You're going to want to get a bed mat or something to put down here on the floor. Uh, and then my last point is this is just the basic bed so we don't get the in-bed lights or the plug that you can get on the more higher trim models. This is uh, basically just one tie down in each corner, those tie down rails, and then a couple slots along the side where you can put in lumber to make some dividers. Let's talk towing and payload now. The first thing I want to tell you, there's great news for 2022. You can now get a six and a half foot bed on the Crew Max model. That's what we have here today. And it results in a 157 inch wheelbase. And of course, more wheelbase is going to equal a more stable towing experience. Plus I should mention, you can even get a longer wheelbase if you get the double cab with the eight foot bed. It's about 164 inch wheelbase. That thing's a monster. Now, towing for this truck as you see it, that's a Crew Max 4x4 with the long bed. We're talking about 11,010 pounds, which is a really respectable number for what is, uh, you know, a volume model of this truck. They're going to sell a lot of these SR5s. Now, quickly, let me look at the door jam sticker. We're talking about 1,450 pounds of payload. Again, a pretty sweet number, and we're gonna put it to the test, so let's go load up some barrels. here on the road with a thousand pounds of payload in the back and with the thousand back there and us up here yeah we're at if not over our payload rating so we are putting this truck properly to the test now before we talk about the barrels though I want to talk about something that Toyota spent a lot of time on with this new Tundra fuel economy anybody who ever drove that old 5.7 probably had the same feelings we did great engine 
horrible fuel economy. That thing just sucked fuel. So much so that Toyota had to introduce that larger fuel tank option on the old truck because people were just complaining about the range. So anyways, is the fuel economy better? The answer is absolutely yes. Now the EPA hasn't released its numbers yet, but Toyota has released initial numbers for this twin turbo V6. So they say that this engine, the non-hybrid, is going to be good for 17 miles per gallon in the city, 23 on the highway for a combined 19 miles per gallon. And just for reference, the old truck, you were getting 13 in the city, 17 on the highway, and just 14 combined. So that's a five MPG jump combined. And don't forget, this has more power now too. So you really are getting it all. Um, and now I guess, Dad, we have to talk about, well, how did they do it? Well, first of all, more aerodynamic. Second of all, you're getting things like shutters up there in the grill and an automatic um, spoiler that lowers down in your front end. At speed, right? At speed. And then maybe the most influential thing, at least from what I'm kind of looking at, is the rear end. So the rear end final drive ratio in the last Tundra was 430. That was a rear end that no one else offered because it's such a torque focused rear end. It's not about fuel economy. Well, they have now dropped to a 330, which is kind of the opposite. That's sort of low. That is much more in line with, hey, we need good fuel economy out of this truck, so let's put a 330 into it. And unlike other manufacturers where you get a choice, Toyota, you don't get a choice. All of these 2022s will have that 330. More gears in the transmission. Yep. And the reality is, at least from my, my perspective, is that with the increased torque that this twin turbo puts out, you don't miss the rear end gearing it, it's made up for it so people say well we lost something no actually you didn't uh, you gained fuel economy and you also gained power i mean that's a win-win exactly so i can just tell you that i've been driving the truck now for a day or two and i've been paying attention to my own readout um, coming up to Ironwood, I got about 150 kilometers in and I averaged 11 liters per hundred. Now I've driven enough Toyotas uh, with the 5.7 over time to tell you that typically, and I'm not heavy on the gas, 14 and a half to 15 would be my best average on the old motor. So go and say, like I say, from roughly 15 to 11, that's that's significant, particularly at the price of fuel today. Okay, fuel economy out of the way. Um, now let's talk about how it's handling this weight, Dad. And, you know, from the passenger seat, we say this a lot, it feels fine. It feels like it could take a lot more weight, to be honest. You know, the number only means so much. The real world feel is what I really care about, and it feels great. As with so many of the trucks that we test when it comes to payload, um, we know that that's not the number. We just know that that's not the, if you put one more pound on, it's gonna crash number. We just wish we had a better feel for, for how much of, of a percentage less it is than the actual limits. And as you well know, we've asked manufacturers over and over again to sit down with us and let's talk about how they come up with payload numbers and nobody. Nobody will do it. Will do it. Yeah. Nobody. Nobody wants to really get into to all those details for whatever reason, whether they're being manipulated for different classes of trucks or who knows, but yeah, none of the manufacturers wanna have that conversation. So that thousand pounds in the bed, nothing. It's, it's like it's not even there. As far as the interior electronics infotainment, 2022 Tundra is as up to date as anything else in this segment. The one thing that Toyota does that I particularly like is there is a simplicity of design inside this cab. It's, it's flat, straight lines, and they are still very much button focused, mm -hmm. buttons and knobs. Um, sure, you got screens, that's necessary, but you still got real gauges. And for me personally, I'm good with that. It's less busy than some of the cabs that we've got today. 
Yeah, I absolutely totally agree. I will point out that if you do get a top trim Tundra, you get a bigger screen and you lose the gauges. So if the gauges is something you really like, you actually can't go to the top trim Tundra or else you're gonna get a digital screen over there. But like that said, that's also kind of par for the course these days. If you wanna compete, you need to have all those screens. Uh, but yeah, the overall feeling is, is still one that's a little simpler than the other trucks on the market. This is not trying to be the super high techie truck choice. No, but on the other hand, the layout is good. Everything is there, yep. it's straightforward. Yep. It's uh, e even in two days, I'm already reaching for things. I just know where stuff is. I don't necessarily have to look down to get at things. And for me, I do have an issue where screens, multiple layers of screens that I got to push a button to get to a screen, to push another button. I think that in some manufacturers have gone just a little nuts with that. And the last fun thing I want to show you guys, watch your arm here, Dad. Down here in the center console, Toyota's not usually a company to do kind of fun Easter eggy stuff, but they've done a couple things. There's this little plastic insert. It's got little trucks in it and a little SUV there. That's kind of cool. And then the rubberized mats that go on the bottom of this thing, check this out. The little tabs to grab them, they're also little trucks and little land cruisers. That's pretty cool too. It's fun to see Toyota having a little bit of fun and putting in some cool little features like that. Okay, time to measure the squat here on the Tundra. And I think this is gonna be especially interesting because of course we have a whole new suspension set up here and we have done squat with the old Tundra. So, you know, usually you get rid of leafs and you squat more, but we'll find out if that's true. So, measuring now to the bottom of this fender, you're talking about 37 inches. 37 inches even. Now we'll pull the weight off and we'll see what the squat was. A little more. Oh, you got it. Weight is out of the back, so let's measure. Right down to the center, back up, truck has not moved, and wow, you're talking about 39 inches. 39 inches, I love when it's easy, and I gotta tell you guys, that is exactly what we always expect. 1,000 pounds generally equals two inches of squat, and now you can see how that stacks up with all the other trucks that we've tested. All right, time to hook up the trailer, and you can see our single camera system. The new Tundra does have a 360 degree camera, but we do not have it fitted. So if you get a more basic model, this is all you're getting. Just that one single backup view. Though I always say it, it is enough to put that hitch right under that pin. All right, folks, we've got our 7,000 pounds on the back and we're just pulling onto our highway here. So let's feel the power, Dad. Nice. Oh, nice. That's nice, smooth, turbocharged power. It's still it. pulling, too. 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. So I, I, quick. I think you'd agree with me. Uh, we got to keep kind of making the comparison to the old V8. Maybe not as immediate, right? That 5.7, the power was immediate. This wasn't quite as kind of quick to get it to the ground, but then that pull was as strong, if not stronger. That felt really good from over here. Yeah, it's completely the reverse. The V8 was, was harder off the line, and then it leaned out in the mid-range, whereas this is a little slower, then the turbo spool up, and then it pulls in the mid-range like crazy. Yeah, it felt nice. And then same thing, transmission, you know, shifts were nice and smooth. It held the gears pretty well. Um, and, and we'll talk about tow haul now. We're in tow haul mode, but one of the unique things on the Tundra, it has now what they call tow plus. So tow plus, 
Uh, we talked to Mike Spears, the engineer. He says around 5,000 pounds is gonna be your split between tow haul and tow plus, and it's just gonna change where your shift points are. But I thought that was definitely cool that they added that in as well. Yeah, it's nice, it's like fine tuning for towing. Yeah. And towing was a huge deal with this Tundra. They went on and on about all the things they did for towing. And actually the model we have here today is the one you wanna get because of the wheelbase. We have the crew cab with the six and a half foot bed. So this is the long wheelbase and more wheelbase always equals more stability with a trailer behind you. And yeah, just, you know, in terms of actual, you know, road dynamics, driving dynamics, it feels really good. I, I was noticing, just a little bit more um, road feel coming through to my butt. Just a little bit of a shake I can kind of feel. And I'm chalking that up to the stiffness of this new frame because of course Tundra used to be open C in the back. Now it is fully boxed. So it's certainly controlling the weight. I don't think the trailer is pushing you around whatsoever, but there is just a little bit more kind of busyness about the truck because I can feel that. Is, is that the right way to describe it? The uh road surface is definitely resonating up and through the frame you can feel it feel it in my butt feel it in the steering more so than in the last version mm -hmm. the only thing is this is not we didn't discover this because frankly Toyota told us this right off the bat because of what they've done with this closed channel frame um, it's going to be stiffer uh, a lot of people equate stiffness with stronger I think it is stronger but it also just simply communicates more of what's going on on the road because there's no flex in the frame to soak up the bad the bad road the potholes the divots etc is it a problem no absolutely not if anything i just wanted to mention driving here right now i'm having a hard time not speeding because i really just don't feel that seven thousand pounds behind this thing it just my speed keeps creeping up and it just feels good like through the turns everywhere else i got absolutely no work here mm -hmm. you know hands off the wheel nothing to it that is interesting just sort of the way like we're talking about it's not too stiff but it does communicate more and the other big change here dad and this was sort of to accommodate for the stiffness was of course there's no leaf springs in the rear end of this truck anymore they've gone to coilovers like ram has used for a while now and uh, that provides a really nice ride when the truck is empty the tundra used to be really guilty of getting that chatter out of the rear end out of the leaves so now you have a beautiful smooth ride when it's empty and then with the trailer on yeah it's still nice and smooth so so far so good okay dad zero to 60 time with our 7,000 pound trailer we're in tow haul we're ready for the race hit it nice a little bit of rubber there's that turbo oh yeah there it is so that was a 14.1 0 to 100, which is pretty good. But you know what, Dad? We're not done yet. Let's do another one in Toe Plus mode and see if Toe Plus makes a difference. And now here comes take two in Toe Plus mode to see if it's any faster than regular tow haul. Wait for the GPS. Come on, baby. Ready for the race, Dad. Hit it. was a 13.8 wow. 0 to 100 so that shaved off three tenths using tow plus versus tow haul and from over here i just felt like it held the gears just a little bit longer yeah it, it runs like right up to 5500 rpm before it shifts very cool well now you guys can see how that number holds up on the leaderboard especially compared to that old 57 v8 Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. My verdict here is that Toyota addressed exactly what they needed to. Much better fuel economy and a modern interior and technology that is going to hold up for years to come. Oh yeah, and you get more power too. That's a win-win in my books. So please now go below and don't forget 
this 2022 Tundra is part of our search for the best truck of 2022. So make sure you come back to the channel around January when we announce our favorite truck for the 22 model year. And like I mentioned now, go below, leave me that comment. Let me know what you think of the Tundra. As always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.